John chapter 14, verse 19. Yet a little while Jesus said, And the world seeth me no more. But ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. At that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Somebody ought to say amen to the word of God. Holy Father God, we praise you and we thank you for your holy words. Lord, we do not know what we would do without you. And Holy Father God, you know that uh, the devil is busy and he is seeking to hinder uh, this message tonight from going out around the world. And we do know the miracle that uh, you perform each and every night to get this message out in 100 languages for the deaf in every country of the world and across these United States. And uh, we, you know the souls that have been saved, the lives that have been touched and changed, and yet the devil through Judas's and Sanballat's and Tobias's are constantly fighting to try to hinder your word from going forth. And you have uh, uh, informed me uh, that this is the case. And so we pray in your holy name, Lord Jesus, please rebuke and bind the devil, his demons, and his hosts from the preaching of the gospel tonight. We are in spiritual warfare. Uh, it would be foolish for me to think that the devil is just going to sit by and let me preach about you, Lord Jesus, without putting up a contest and a fight. Uh, that's just not realistic and, uh, uh, and is not the case. So, Lord, we pray in spite of him uh, that your Holy Spirit would override everything that's designed right now to hinder your word from going forth. And we pray that you'd open blinded eyes and unstop deaf ears and save those who are lost. We'll have your Holy Spirit to rebuke and, uh, and, and deal with those who name the name of Christ but who are quenching your Holy Spirit even as I stand here and preach when they should be praying. Put a spirit of prayer upon the saints, not a spirit of spectatorship, but prayer, participation, to pray for souls to be saved, lives to be changed, and your holy name glorified, to be a part of your good work and not... Uh, a hindrance to it. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. You may be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, Marcus Dodge said, and if you don't pay attention to this quote, you'll miss it. Marcus Dodge said, the love to which Christ promises a manifestation of himself is not an idle sentiment or a shallow fancy, but a principle prompting obedience. And by the way, beloved, if your Christianity does not um, move you to be obedient to God and to Jesus Christ and to the Word of God, you have a false Christianity. You are a fake, a phony. Uh, you are not the real deal. Uh, if you are truly born again, you will have a desire in your heart and in your spirit, in your mind. I cannot explain it to you where you want to be obedient to God, uh, even though you may fail sometimes. 
Can somebody say amen? Somebody who knows Jesus. Jesus has expressed, beloved, that the disciples are and forever will be, that includes us, uniquely connected to him and the Father. If you are a child of God, that's a beautiful thing that ought not to make you depressed and defeated and sad. You ought to be joyful, happy, and glad. Can somebody say amen? Beloved, this union would be further solidified in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection and his ascension to heaven. On earth, they would be filled with the Holy Spirit, that is, the Spirit of Christ, the Spirit of God. The representation of Jesus living inside of them, uh, the actual uh, presence of the Holy Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ living inside of us. If you are saved tonight, that's what you got going on inside of you in your inner man. Uh, Jesus living inside of us. When Jesus returned to take them to heaven, they would be with him and the Father forever. Beloved Jesus has previously identified those who are true believers as those who love him and who have the love of the Father in them evidenced by obedience to him. Amen, somebody. It's not hard to find uh, true Christians. Uh, Watch how they live. Not only at the church house, not only in Sunday school, but at home. Are they born again at home? Are they saved at home? Because if you're not saved at home, you can't be saved at church. You're just a mask wearer. You're a hypocrite, a phony, and a fake. The overall fruit of your life will show whether or not you're truly born again. I'm not talking about some pumped up, uh, made up stuff. I'm not talking about uh, some rules that you have to follow and you got a list of things you do and you don't do. Because some of those folk are some of the biggest devils in the world. They got 10 rules. They got 20 rules. They got 30. They've added to the rules. They've added to the Bible. They've added to the law. I know some who uh, believe that watching television is a cardinal sin, that, that you ought to go to hell for watching television. We probably ought to go to hell, but that's not the case. And they live by that religiously until they get on TV themselves. I know of a pastor who had a rule in his church that none of the Christians ought to watch television. And then, bless his heart, he got on television himself. And I'm, I'm almost sure he watched himself to make sure he looked proper and right. I know another, another group of Christians who, uh, they believe you can't get on the Internet. Don't get on the Internet. They call it the Internets, but whatever the case, they, they, you, cannot, you should not be on it until they want you to sin by getting them a plane ticket through your internet. Beloved, uh, you don't have to worry about all of that. If you have Christ living on the inside of you, uh, you're going to be moving in the right direction. You're not going to be perfect, but uh, people will be able to tell that you're born again, that you are a child of God. They will sense it even also in your spirit. Uh, I, I, know, I know about meeting a folk who can't even speak English, but somehow we meet. Uh, I've been to many countries around the world. I can tell they're saved, and I can look at them, I, I, and they know I'm saved. And we have a fellowship, and we've been trying to talk to I guess we, we just talk Christian talk, but, and it's amazing how that works. Now, ladies and gentlemen, he expands on another qualification that he has only touched on before. He that hath my commandments, amen somebody, and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. If you have the commandments of the Lord and you keep them, that's the person who loves me. You say, well, how can that be? Because you have the Holy Spirit of God. You have the Holy Spirit of Christ living inside of you. You can't do anything else but do that. And if you get out of line, 
uh, the Holy God will chastise you and deal with you and help you get back in the line. Uh, and if you're not willing to do that, he'll take you home. To have Jesus' commandments is an interesting expression. It does not mean merely to know about them or to receive them as one uh, might receive facts in a history class. But having Jesus' commandments means that one is holding on to them, has embraced them, has embraced them, has internalized them, and has made them a part of one's self, one's being. But is in you deeper than that. It is in you because of the Holy Spirit of God in you, the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ in you will lead you and guide you and admonish you and rebuke you, amen somebody, about the evil that's in your flesh and that is in the world. Before I got saved, I was not bothered by my conscience or anything else about evil. I thought I was wrong if I was not doing wrong. We made fun of people who did not do evil like us. But once I got born again, once I got saved, not only was my conscience convicting me, the Holy Spirit of God, which I did not understand fully at that time, was convicting me, telling me not to do things before I even did them. What an experience. A voice inside of me today that said, don't think like that. <clears throat> Have you ever had that experience? There's something going on on the inside of you. It's not you. But a voice that says, well, while you're reading a book in the Walmart, Walmart parking lot, and you know a beautiful thing is walking in front of you and uh, something says to you, something tells you, nobody's in the car with you, uh, something says don't look at her. I think that's more than conscience. I believe that's the Holy Spirit of God. Don't even, don't do it. I know you want to look at her, but don't look at her. Don't, don't take that second look. Yeah, you got, you caught her out the, uh, the, the corner of your eye. Don't look again. Amen, somebody. How many of you have had the experience you wanted to say something, you wanted to give somebody a, a, a piece of your little mind, wanted to give somebody your two cents, and, but something inside of you said, no, I'm not going to, don't say that. <laughs> Amen, somebody. I think that's, that's, that's deeper than conscience. That's the Holy Spirit talking to you. And some husbands and some wives and some teenagers need to learn it and understand it. Or they need to be born again so they can have it. That uh, still small voice uh, telling you before you even say it out of your mouth, don't you say that. You're going to grieve my, you're going to grieve me if you say that. You're going to quench me if, you, can somebody uh, say I've experienced that. Raise your hand right now. Raise your hand right now. You've experienced that. Raise your hand right now. Uh huh. Yes. If you're saved, you you have experienced that. If you're born again, you know about that. And some of y'all are lying. Some of you folk are lying. Before you told that lie, before you tell that lie, that still small voice rises up inside. Don't you don't you tell that lie? You know that I'm not going to bless that. You're grieving me. You're grieving me. You're grieving me. By even thinking about that, don't you think like that? How many of you have had the Holy Spirit, uh, that still small voice to tell you, don't think like that? You're thinking wrong. You, 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 those evil thoughts are grieving me. Don't dwell on that. Say no to that devil. Say no to that evil thought. Amen to somebody. Uh, that's not just your conscience. That's the Holy Spirit of God if you are saved, if you're born again. How many of you know that the Holy Spirit will tell you not to buy something? You know you know you're wrong. You know 
uh, what I said in the Word. You know you don't need that. You're just getting that to get a little shopping therapy in to feel better for the day only. Tomorrow you're going to regret it, and you're probably going to come back and lie and, and, and return it to the people to get your money back. But you should not do it in the first place. Uh, at the same time, how many times has the Lord said, okay, you can have that. He gives you peace about it. He doesn't bother you about it. Yeah, you can go ahead and get that. You can get that pair of shoes. That's okay. But when you don't, you know you don't need it, and you know you got to pay the mortgage, and so forth, uh, he'll say, no, don't buy that. Get off of that. Get off of that. No, don't buy that. That's that still, small voice, the Holy Spirit of God. Ladies and gentlemen, obviously such a person will also be obeying these commandments. A person who's born again, a person who's saved, a person who loves Jesus. You don't have to worry about them. Stop trying to control people and trying to make people do stuff and so forth and so on. If they are children of God, if they're born again, if they're saved, they got somebody to control them. His name is the Holy Spirit of God. Amen, somebody. Beloved, it is this person whom Jesus says, shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Are you in that relationship? Are you in that triangle of love? if you will. One commentator expounds on this with these words. Jesus says that he himself will love such a disciple, a disciple who obeys his commandments and will show himself to him or her. Thus Jesus himself will remain in personal contact with his disciples, will have deep fellowship with them, he may be departing, but he will remain in relationship with them, although the relationship will exist in a few, or rather in a new form, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Beloved, if you are truly saved and you have sinned somewhere along the line, you can testify to this truth. When you disobeyed God, you no longer felt the presence of God or the fellowship of God in Christ like you used to. And I will tell you, ladies and gentlemen, there is no pain like that in the spirit. Even the pain of death, the pain of, of divorce will never touch the pain of being separated, or rather uh, the fellowship being broken between you and God. There's a hymn that we sing sometimes uh, that goes a little like this. Uh, is there anything between your soul and the Savior? Is there anything between your soul and the Savior? Any sin, any somebody, any money? between you, your soul, and the Savior. You could tell that the Holy Spirit was grieved even if you tried to carry on as though nothing was wrong for some time and oh, how fake you are and oh, how people can see right through you. But more importantly, God can see right through you. You had not lost your salvation. You're still born again. You're still saved. David knew about this, but that unconfessed sin or that sin that you confessed but you didn't repent of had cut off that special fellowship with Jesus Christ, with the Lord that believers enjoy. And I'm here to tell you, beloved, I don't want anything more than that sweet fellowship between the Lord and me. I will do anything I've got to do to get that back. I, I, don't, I just don't want to be in that a situation where the fellowship is broken because of sin in my life. And because God has chastised me very well in my Christian life, 
that um, I've learned the hard way to make sure I don't lose that fellowship. I pray the same for you. And one preacher preached a message one time. I bet you I won't do that again, and he's right about it. That fellowship was only restored when you confessed and repented of that sin, that evil, that rebellious attitude, that talking back, that wanting to give a, a two, a sense of your mind, a piece of your mind to your husband, to your wife, to your children, your children to you, or whatever the case might be. Every believer should grow continuously in their relationship with Jesus Christ and the Father. While prayer, Bible reading, Bible study, and church attendance play a role in this, the primary means of Christian growth is through obedience to God, obedience to Jesus Christ, obedience to the Holy Spirit of God, obedience to the Word of God, somebody or to say man right there. You may not like it, but it's still right. As my dad used to say, it may be tight, but it's right. In fact, doing all of the above falls under being obedient to God. Daniel S. Warner wrote, By thy blessed word obeying, Lord, we prove our love sincere. For we hear thee gently saying, Lord, uh, rather love would do as well as hear. In thy wisdom, Lord, confiding, we will follow in thy way. With thy love in us abiding, it is delightful to obey. Dear Redeemer, we would hollow all thy words so firm and true. In thy footsteps meekly follow thy commands we love to do. Dear friend of mine, if you do not yet know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, and you don't have this experience of that still small voice of the Holy Spirit leading you and guiding you and admonishing you and helping you and encouraging you, may I encourage you to trust Jesus Christ as your Savior today. The Bible says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou you shalt be saved. Just acknowledge that you are a sinner, like we all are, and that you have broken God's laws. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Because of our sin, we die physically, and we're buried in a grave at any time in our lives. We don't know when we die, but death is coming. And we also die and go to hell. Our spirit, our soul goes to a place called hell where we will spend eternity. Romans 6.23 says the wages of sin is death. This, is, uh, this includes both physical death and spiritual death in hell. That's bad news, but I have some good news for you. Jesus Christ said in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Are you willing to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ tonight, that he died for your sins, all of your sins, was buried and rose again? Pray and ask him to save you tonight, believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. And he will save you. For the Bible says in Romans 10, 9, uh, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou you shalt be saved. Verse 13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Pray and ask him to save you tonight. I'll help you in prayer. Just pray after me phrase by phrase and mean it from your heart. Believing in your heart in the Lord Jesus Christ and I guarantee you that God will save you. Let's pray. Holy Father God, I acknowledge that I am a sinner and that I have broken your laws. 
For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive me of all of my sins. As I now believe with all of my heart that Jesus Christ died for me, was buried, and rose again. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and save my soul and change my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me to repent of my sins past and to follow you in the new life. In Jesus Christ's name I pray and for his sake, amen. Dear friend of mine, if you believed in your heart that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, was buried and rose again, and you trust that Jesus Christ is your Savior, and you prayed that prayer with me and you meant it from your heart, may I say to you congratulations uh, on doing the most important thing in life, and that is receiving the free gift of salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ and by trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ for your salvation. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ, please go to gospellightsociety.com and read my pamphlet, What to Do After You Enter Through the Door. Jesus Christ said in John 10, 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out.